Now that we are back, welcome back to some more Stoneworks. I'm Stonewinner Gaming, and today I am here with another modular engine build here. And of course, it is another car because that is kind of my specialty. And I know as you're looking around this, uh, no other word for it, monstrosity I've got here, it doesn't exactly look very good. Yeah, we've got something like a plate on the back end, some seating in the middle with controls and a battery. And on the front end, you've got an engine with some wheels around the base. And then gearboxes, you know, it's a functioning car, but <laughs> functioning is a loose term. It has been a struggle to get just about anything working with the air and fuel manifolds for the car. And that is because of those stoichiometric ratios, which I think I've just about figured everything out with them for Stormworks. And I do also want to put a little bit of a caveat on that as well. I figured out that the developers just, they're giving me non-needed headaches here. I don't know what I'm trying to say exactly, but I'm probably not going to be messing with these until they're actually released is what I'm trying to say here because basically they keep changing around different things like the power of the engines and different things and I'm just trying to get them to work with specific gearbox ratios so that's kind of a waste of my time so I'll probably just do that when they actually release the engines but for now I actually have something that works and the correct stoichiometric ratio if you guys are interested is 14.7 to 1 you might think storm why in the world do we need to know that is that anything important to us well that's the first thing we kind of need to know to get an engine started here as you can see it actually gives you the air to fuel ratio right there and I'm running at about a 14.3 to 1 which I found helps it start up especially in colder environments I don't think it really matters but I have it switch over to a 14.7 to 1 ratio when we hit, I think, second gear. I was testing around a couple of different throttles with it as well. And if you guys are interested, the stoichiometric ratio doesn't need to be choked at all or any, I guess, lower, less air when you are in a colder environment like real life with a choke on an engine. I don't know how many of you out there know how a real blood choke works. Anyway, I actually have a working car here. It does have a four-speed automatic gearbox with reverse as well. I took my microcontroller off of my smart car, the one I built with the modular engine, and put it on here. And I mean, it works all right. The car gets going. It might be a little bit quiet because it's got that uh, rickety old engine sound from the small engine, which I just don't really like hearing. I don't know how many of you do or don't like hearing it but it can get up and go. Although the thing that really stinks about this car here is you'd think this is like maybe four, eight cylinders. This car right now has 12 cylinders in it and it struggles at high RPS to get up to maybe 100 miles an hour, which I guess I haven't really tuned it is actually a pretty good number, but it seems like the modular engines are also a bit gutless, and I'll show you what I mean in a second as I get back to the workshop here. You can definitely tell that suspension isn't at all, you know, worked through yet. How wobbly it is here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> it does have very small wheels for a, a 12-cylinder engine here. I know it is a little bit dark in the hangar here that I've spawned my car, but here is the V8 I made with the modular engine. And I actually did slap on a little bit of a frame, I guess you could call it, like a baseboard to it. So it does look almost like a little bit of a go-kart here, but we can fire up that 8-cylinder. You can definitely tell with the same numbers on it right now, it struggles to keep around 5 RPS when we start it up here. I mean... It's okay, it'll idle around 5 RPS, it does climb. I haven't figured out how to stop it from just slowly climbing like this, but I digress. Of course, this thing does go down the road, but if I shut up for a second, you can actually hear it. Uh, it stalled a little bit when we started going there. So yeah, now we're going down the road. It's got the same 4-speed automatic gearbox that that other car had, but you know we're getting 70 miles an hour 70 I think it'll top out at around 80 miles an hour near the end of this runway it just isn't great 
And then another big problem I found, we can look at this dial right here. We're getting 0 0.08 MPG right now. And I mean, that is really bad, don't get me wrong, but I did drive a couple of these versions around for a little while, like highway driving. The best MPG I ever got out of my V8 was, what was it, 0.41, which is horrible. <laughs> it's not great at all. It, I mean, it is a V8 engine, and you'd think, Storm, why don't you just try like an inline four cylinder to get a better efficiency here? And I'll show you why the inline four just, um, it doesn't work. I'll grab that version real quick. All right, come on. I'm gonna start up four cylinder. Um, yeah, the four cylinders is starting out to give us some gas, which engages the clutch, and we're trying to go now. So yeah, this is my four cylinder. And if you want to take a turtle and um, slide it right by us, you'd probably be going a lot faster. Public transportation is faster than this. You'd probably be spending a lot less gas as well. Um, this does not have the same exact gearbox as my two other cars, the V8 and the 12-cylinder car. This is actually has a modified, much weaker version of that. It's still a ma not a manual, an automatic four-speed gearbox with reverse, but it has much lower ratios so that the engine survives going down the road. As you can see, we're going at a blistering pace right now at a 20.4 miles an hour, yeah. breaking some new land speed records here. And you'd think this would be remotely efficient? Yeah, nope, not at all. We're running 13 RPS, and this one was actually less efficient than the V8 at highway speeds. When I drove it around for probably 5 10 minutes, I think. It averaged on highway, what was it, 37, 38.37 or 0.38, let me clarify, not 37 or 38, which is good in today's standards, we're talking decimal points, 37 and 38, which is very bad. <laughs> and I'd probably attribute that to how little power this car actually has. As you can see, we're not going much of anywhere right now. And I can actually recover it. If we make it a manual transmission, it can get you somewhere, but you're going to leave just about all of your fuel where you took off from. Because you have to rev it so high just to hit the next gear, and then the RPS can't move much after you hit that gear. I just... I don't know. I've lost too much hair, per se, in trying to make these little engines work, or just modular engines in general. <laughs> Oh, I should just switch back to small engines or the medium engines or any of those and just build an actual car or boat in Stormworks. Although I have to say I have not worked on the larger engines, so maybe that's what happened with the power here. Maybe the developer... Oh, we're stalling it again because we don't have our foot on the floor. I'll just turn that off real quick while I'm talking. But the developers did add in the 3x3 and 5x5, you know, engines. I'm assuming for huge boats, and like I did say probably a minute ago, I haven't worked on any of them. So, I might test them out and see how good they are for boats and stuff, but yeah. Maybe that is why the small engines have no power, because they kind of push the power of bigger engines up and maybe decrease these or something. Or maybe the combination of fuel and air just doesn't give us as much power. I don't understand why it wouldn't. One other thing I did want to do in this video, I wanted to convert over one of my previous modular engine vehicles from a... how do I put it? The previous version with the air and fuel coming from one manifold to two different manifolds here because everything's called a manifold but I've already switched over the two different manifolds in here the fuel going to the back oh I should probably connect up the fuel to the port in the floor it is a very tight vehicle this small smart car but connect that up and then I actually need the air connection on the front end with a fluid port it's kind of cool though I put all these air intakes here to look like a little grill for the car 
This doesn't have any cooling. That might be a problem. Anyway, let's get back to, you know, just fixing the car itself. There are a couple of cosmetic problems around, but we won't, you know, mess with them. All we really need to do is just build ourselves a kind of dividing feature here. And we can make it a one by two, give it two nodes, both number nodes here, input and an output. And all we really need to do is grab a divide here. There's one right there and a constant number. And we need to divide by the number for air and or fuel. So for air, now for fuel, excuse me, I usually do 0.28 and for air, I usually do 0.8 on it. So 80% and 28%. All right, then we can save that up there. What did I call it? I just call it divide. I'll call it divide air. And then we can go back and do the exact same thing for fuel. Divide fuel and we just switch this number from 0.28 to 0.8. Man, I really hope this works. And then we go back into our inventory. We grab the divide air and the divide fuel. And how I've set my car up here, I have just a throttle coming out of the microcontroller on the roof. So I take that throttle and I run it through both of these and connect it to the respected uh, manifolds here. So let me grab that clutch. Why do I not have a clutch connected? Odd. I think this car is very uh, broken at this point. Is that my clutch? That's the clutch. Perfect. So throttle, 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 engine throttle. Perfect. Connect it up to those two and then we connect air up to that manifold and fuel up to that guy. Let's see if it runs. <laughs> In terms of working, I give it like a 20% chance. Let's see. Although I have just about all of my things connected up. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working at all. I remember my problem. So one of the things with the modular engines, I know you guys might have a heart attack or something with the horribly sloppy logic here, but uh, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. One of the things I found when I was working on my other car, the one I finally got to start with the microcontroller working it, the V8 and the 12 cylinder, all of that, I found that the engine needs to be started up to around 4 RPS before it'll run by itself, versus all the previous engines in Stormworks, you could get it up to 1.5 to 2 RPS, and it'd be perfectly fine. So I need to find my start engine here, which tells the starter to run, and then follow that logic back to the threshold. As you can see, the logic right here is only telling the starter to try and start the engine up to 1.5 RPS here. So if we change that to 4.5, and then I do also want to change that back to, let's just say 60% throttle instead of 80. Once we get this guy on the ground, I think it'll start up. <gasps> Life! <laughs> um, maybe I over-exaggerated. Come on! Power! <laughs> I'm rocking back and forth in my chair, give me some power! <gasps> it's going forwards at a certain speed, it is gaining RPS. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, this was a 5-cylinder engine, but since I had to put two more manifolds onto it, or not two more manifolds, connect them in a T-shape and all that, which you don't have to, but I wanted to, it's only a 3-cylinder now, so it has no power to it. So, yeah, just uh, another note on how gutless the modular engines are. And I might cut out a bit of that logic explanation, but I'm kind of just, not sad, but disappointed in general. Because I really liked how I had this car running. I had it limited to 55 miles an hour, MPG of 7 down the road, 7 MPG with a, a 5 cylinder module engine. And it actually had like a, a peppy, a peppy speed to it or whatever. It was pretty, not exactly sporty, but I mean... It went from 0 to 55 in like 5 or 6 seconds, which 
is actually pretty good. I mean, it's not 0 to 60, but I mean, it's still pretty quick. I do apologize that this episode has been a lot of me complaining, but once the modular engines do hit the shelves of the official game, I should have a much more upbeat, you know, mentality of them and probably be creating a few more builds with them, as well as reviving my little smart car. So it should be some pretty good fun in the future. I'd also like to hear what you guys think of the modular engines. Have you gotten your own modular engines running with the correct stoichiometric ratios or did you have some problems just like i did leave a comment down below i always love hearing your guys's feedback but of course if you guys did like this please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with stormworks and more of my content but i've been great goodbye to people who need me and i need to go